I'm Robert Estrit, livingpianos.com, with a technique video for you today. The question today is how do you handle leaps and get them accurate? That's right, it's tough to, when you have big jumps on the piano. You know, violinists have the same thing where they have to go from a very low note to a high note and nail it. And you wonder, how do you practice something like this? Well, there is a technique for you, and I'm going to show you. And I'm going to kind of demonstrate, I'm trying to think of the ideal piece. It's so prevalent that when I stopped to think about it, it was hard to think of like an ideal example. But the B minor scherzo of Chopin definitely has issues with leaps all over the place. And you know, the last thing in the world you want to do is when you have a big leap is to crack the note right after the leap. So here is how you practice it. The B minor scherzo, I have a performance of it. As a matter of fact, online, you can watch. There's a link here on your screen that you can check out later. But I'm going to show you one way you can practice that. It starts off with a couple of big chords. So with all these jumps around, if you don't want to miss something, what you can do is you can stop just before the note, that is the leap. This is the next phrase that has a big leap in the right hand just before the last note. I'll play it up to tempo, then I'm going to play it stopping just before the note that you don't want to miss. That note. So the way to practice is to stop just before the note and be right over the key, but don't play it. This way you can study your hand and see if you've gone too far or too near and make the adjustment so that you can land exactly over the note before you have to play it like this. And then I try again, make sure I'm very precise. Then what you do is, once you're used to being right over the note after the leap again and again, and you're exactly over it, you just make that space shorter. You don't actually get rid of the space completely in your mind, even though rhythmically it may be gone entirely. You're actually thinking, and eventually you'll get so relaxed that you're not thinking of stopping at all. It becomes a fluid motion, the ultimate actually negates all the practice you did to that point. It seems counterintuitive, but that's what happens. At first you have to study the, the leap and practice the leap. Eventually it becomes a fluid motion, just like a violinist I mentioned, when they're going for a very high note and it has to be within fractions of an inch. A great violinist has done it so many times that it's kind of a leap of faith. They know exactly where it's going to be because it's practiced so much. So again, that's the way to practice leaps. Practice just before the leap, stopping right over the key, and study the hand. Make sure it's precisely over. If it's not precisely over, practice making that adjustment of either moving further or not as far until you can be over it consistently. And then play the note after the, the little break. So that time I cracked it. So now I'm gonna, I, and I noticed I study how I cracked it. I cracked it by not going far enough. So I, now I know to go a little further. But you could also take the little extra time to study the hand instead of playing the note, make certain you're over it beforehand. I feel very fortunate that in this type of practice, you can actually get real consistency where you will not miss any of those leaps. I'm very interested how this works for you. Try it out and contact me, Robert, at livingpianos.com. And thanks for joining me. Thank you.